Hey guys, in this video I'll be showing you guys how to make Ignis from Rogue Lineage. Remember, this is not my idea, this idea was taken from Rogue. So basically what we're going to start off with, we're going to make our, uh, remember, uh, the mana that we're going to have in here is going to be from our other zero, our other video, the mana system. I'll be putting it down in the description and I'll also put it at the end of the video. So just be aware of that. So the mana system here is from the one of our previous videos. Let's get right into it. So we're going to have, so first we want to do here, we want to have uh, our event. We want to put our mana event inside a folder. And you want to put our ragdoll inside of the folder. So I've, I've named this ragdoll so I can remind myself to make the ragdoll script and so I can post it. So like when you use Ignis to get ragdoll. Because inside the system I didn't use no ragdoll because I didn't want to, I didn't want to like to confuse people with like using my like my own module. So I'm going to like, I'm going to like make a whole video where I explain that separately. And now we're going to have our burning. So what, what they're going to, uh, they're going to, how we're, we're going to pair this to the player, the player's human root part. So when they get on fire by this little Ignis right here, this is going to appear in the body. They're going to destroy it. And now that's basically all we're going to do outside of the script. Now we're going to go to starter pack. We're going to make a tool. Make sure we, uh, required handle is off. We're going to go to our local script. Inside the local script here, we're going to just locate our tool. So script our parent. Look at our event. That will be ragdoll. And then look at our player and look at character and humanoid. Pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. Now we're going to do tool.activated connect function. And now we're going to fire the event. So we're firing the event is because um, uh, I wanted to do it like this. So when, uh, when I'm making the ragdoll, I want to make it... Uh, I, I just want to uh, have I want to return some uh I'm return some values so, so it actually makes the ragdoll look good so that's why I'm doing remote event because I could put this all in one script but I just want to make it like just to, just to be safe so yeah so now we're, we're gonna make our remote event fire here and over here you want to make your Ignis animation all I do is just make the player's hand just come out pretty simple pretty straightforward and now what we're gonna do here we're gonna get run service and we're gonna look this is gonna be our R RST this is basically gonna be our uh, our ragdoll remote event inside of case storage. We're gonna get our, we're gonna uh, make three variables here. We're basically gonna have five tables in all. We're gonna have debounce v1, v2, debounce two, and v3. And now we're gonna and these all are gonna be tables. And now we're gonna do on server events. So now we're gonna call it our remote function. We're gonna connect the function. And we're gonna run player through the parameters. Now we're gonna do if player with for child data folder dot mana equal equals zero and not debounce two player, then return n. So what we're doing here basically uh, making it so that. If the player tries to hold, if the player tries to use Ignis while they have no mana at all, it will not fire. And now we're gonna we're just basically starting our debounce up here. And now all we're gonna do here, we're gonna basically look at our mana, our remember our mana from our other videos, and we're gonna look at character. And now we're gonna uh, get our Ignis fire. This Ignis fire is gonna be inside of our rub case storage. Remember, we're gonna move this to rub case storage. Just a heads up. And now we're gonna clone it. And uh, remember, if you're when we're cloning it, we're gonna be saving it to a table. That's why you have so many tables. And now we're gonna do uh, Ignis fire dot position, and now we're gonna position to the right arm, and then we're gonna like make it like a little bit more like we're gonna we're gonna change the position of it so it actually fits on the arm. So you can change it to whatever you like. But I did the vector three dot new. We're gonna make it go down a little bit. Okay, so now what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do Ignis snap. Now we're gonna basically get our animation. So we're gonna do uh, character wait for child humanoid load animation script parent animation because script parent and our animations right here in this animation. Now we're gonna play the animation and we're gonna uh, parent Ignis fire to the workspace so we can actually see it. We're gonna make our local function. We're gonna have this is gonna be equal to like the number of how long we want the fire to last. And this is gonna be basically be like the humanoid. And this is gonna be a humanoid root part. This is gonna be that's what we put inside three parameters. So what we're gonna what we're gonna do here we're gonna look at the burn and we're gonna clone it. So we're gonna look at the burn. We're cloning the burn. We're gonna position it to the human root part so it's on their body. And now we're gonna pair it to the workspace so we can actually see it. Now we're gonna make our well constraint, and now we're gonna pair it to the human root part. And now we're gonna make part zero and part one. Whatever you put in here doesn't matter, but it has to be the two things that you're welding. So we could put burn here and human root part here, and it and it was to do the same thing. 
and now we're gonna make a uh, v3 player equal to uh weld uh, c so uh, i'm not welding it to the burn because since weld c is parented to uh burn uh, we can just make this so it's gonna if we delete this it's gonna delete this too because uh the parent of this is weld c and now we're gonna do it for i for i uh equals one through whatever number you put so like 10 do we're gonna wait 0.5 and the human's gonna take one damage and now if i equals the number like it finally hits like that final number then we're gonna destroy uh um uh the weld and then we're gonna continue else if this if this is not passed like i is not equal to this we're just gonna continue to loop and now we're gonna make an, another uh well constraint and now what we're gonna do here we're gonna make it uh we're just gonna parent uh ignis fire to the right hand and we're gonna make part one uh uh this ignis fire so remember if you change these two around nothing's gonna change so basically we can well constraint to like to weld our uh ignis fire to our hand and now we're gonna save the uh ignis fire uh to our well constraint remember we made it to uh we made it with the well constraint because we know that uh this is gonna be parented to the well constraint so we can just destroy it all and now we're gonna make b boss 2 play equal to true and now we're gonna uh we're doing e we're making it equal to true so it can make like uh so you can make sure everything's running fine so if you want to like uh Set it equal to false, and so we can make sure that okay, if this condition is true, we can pass this. This is going to be our, our helping condition. Now we're going to do mana dot change connect function. Now we're going to do if mana dot value equals equals zero and dev player, so this is equal to true. Then we're going to make dev player equals false. So this means this is going to make a uh, this is going to cancel out uh, the player's ignis. So if they're holding fire and their mana goes all the way down to zero, we're never going to stop them from using it. Now we're going to now we're make a, a local function called check array. We're gonna make if debunks player. So if this is still equal to true, then we're gonna make our ray list params dot new, ray cast params dot new, and we're basically gonna make our our filter type our uh, enum dot ray cast filter type dot blacklist, and we're gonna we're gonna make our ray list dot filter descendants instance equal to the player dot character. And remember, we're gonna put this inside the table because it passes table values. Uh, and we want we want to make it equal to our, our character because we don't want to we don't want the ray to detect us. And we don't we get hit by fire. Uh, but if you guys want that to happen, you can remove that. So like you can have like a percentage here, like then it can fire like the player dot character, and if not, you can just remove it from the table. But so basically if you want backfiring, you I can help you guys with that. If you just join the Discord, I'll help you with that. Now we're gonna make our main ray. Uh the main ray is still I mean, I'll try to make it super easy for you guys. So what we're gonna do here is workspace uh semicolon raycast. Basically making the uh, the character's human root part uh, dot C frame, we're changing it to position. What we're gonna do here for the next one is we're gonna get the human root part look vector. We're gonna get the human root part C frame dot look vector, and we're gonna get 15.5 studs in front of the human root part. And now we're gonna fire. We're gonna pass this ray list inside of the uh inside the what we just made so it doesn't uh, hit our our character. So now we're gonna do if mana ray and debounce two player and mana dot value is not equal to zero, then if so then if everything passes so saying that they they don't have zero mana and they the ray, they found the ray and debounce player two is equal to true then we're gonna uh check if we find the humanoid inside the ray so main ray dot instance dot parent found for child humanoid then if we find the humanoid then we're gonna return true and we're gonna return the character so basically we find let's say if we found my character like suvere then it's gonna return true and it's gonna find suvere and if it doesn't it's just not gonna pass anything then we do while demons two player. So while uh, demons two player is still equal to true, then we're gonna wait. So it doesn't. Uh, while we're doing a while function, it doesn't. Work. We don't want our reluctant to crash. And then we're gonna do uh, local uh, local u u one and u t equals check ray, and u one will be equal to true, and u two will be equal to our character. Now, if u one, so if this pass is true, then we're gonna make our body velocity. So basically, we can push the player back. Uh, we're gonna be using body velocity. Uh, so instance dot new body velocity. Then we're gonna. Uh, Get our body velocity. We're gonna pair it to the human root part. So U two bit the character find first child human root part. So remember U two is still the character. So treat it as a character, right? So whoever gets hit by the ray, that's gonna be the character. Now we're gonna adjust our max force. Do it to whatever you want. Then we're gonna do our for our velocity. We're gonna do character dot human root part dot c frame dot look vector times fifteen. So depending on what this last value is, is gonna be how fast they're gonna be pushed back in the direction of what you're facing. And now we're going to apply our burning effect, so our burning effect function. And then we're going to fire uh, 5, so how long you want the, the ticks to last, so around like 5 seconds. So around like uh, around like 2 to 3 seconds actually, because we're doing a wait point five. so it's going to wait before this goes again. 
and then we're gonna uh fire the humanoid because remember we said our our second one is the humanoid and we're gonna say our third one's the humanoid root part so we're gonna do here we're gonna we fire the humanoid and we're gonna fire the humanoid root part and then we're gonna set uh v2 player equal to bv so our body velocity and then we're gonna wait and then we're gonna destroy our bv because we want we don't want this we don't want this body velocity to stay here and like make our game even slower and then we're gonna break this wall loop so it doesn't run in the background and then we're gonna do repeat wait until not until debounce to player and what is going to what this basically means is going to wait until this is going to be equal to false so uh once this is equal to false then we're gonna uh then we're gonna make demons to player equal to nil and then we're gonna stop our animation and then we're gonna do v to, uh v1 player destroy and then we're gonna do v1 player equals no so basically we're destroying it or making it equal to nil in the same line uh what we're gonna do here we're gonna do if uh, v2 player is not equal to nil then we're going to set v2 player equal then we're going to set v2 player destroy because sometimes it might pass it might give you an error because sometimes the game might have already destroyed it so we can't set it equal to nil that's what we're just going to make some good condition to make sure that this is actually true then we're going to do v3 player is not equal to not equal to nil then we're going to do v3 player destroy and then we're going to end then we're going to close the debounce here so we can keep this going and going all over and over again so basically this is how you make your uh your rogue uh your roblox rogue lineage ignis if you have any questions uh join the discord down below if you guys enjoyed this video leave a, leave a like and subscribe hope you guys enjoyed this and have a great day thank you